Good afternoon and welcome to Resourcing Edge's webinar on interviewing and hiring. The session is intended for those involved with their organization selection process for new employees. In this session, we're going to look at the legal hiring practices we recommend for all our clients to follow. Numerous state and federal laws prohibit hiring discrimination. These laws also allow job candidates who win lawsuits to collect substantial damages from organizations like yours. Equal employment opportunity policies are only the first step in preventing hiring discrimination. It also takes an organization-wide awareness of and commitment to non-discriminatory hiring practices. You are in the best position to promote non-discriminatory hiring. That's why you need to understand the legal requirements of hiring policies and procedures. With this knowledge, you can handle all aspects of the hiring process fairly and appropriately. In this session, we'll look at fair employment laws and company policy, writing and using job descriptions, composing unbiased job advertisements, conducting non-discriminatory interviews, choosing appropriate pre-employment tests, and checking and documenting references. During the session, if you have any questions, you may enter questions into the question module of your webinar screen and I will address those at the end of the session. Here's why you need to know about this topic. Hiring decisions are among the most important decisions made in an organization. Good hiring practices can eliminate or reduce many legal risks, reduce costs, increase productivity, and improve morale. Ill-advised hiring decisions, on the other hand, can result in high turnover, duplication of training, missed opportunities, and lost customers. Furthermore, an ill-advised hire may well necessitate a su subsequent termination, and every termination, no matter how justifiable and well-documented, exposes the organization to a risk of wrongful termination or discrimination claim from the disgruntled former employee. For all these reasons, it pays to follow the right procedures to find the right person for the job the first time around. Let's begin our examination of legal hiring practices by considering the laws that require these practices. The Civil Rights Act of 1964, commonly known as Title VII, is the grandparent of employment discrimination laws in this country. It says you cannot consider race, color, sex, religion, or national origin when making any employment decision, including hiring. The Age Discrimination in Employment Act prohibits discrimination based on age. You cannot refuse to hire an applicant solely because he or she is age 40 or older. The Equal Pay Act says that men and women must get equal pay for work that requires equal skill, effort, and responsibility and is performed under similar conditions. And the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, says you can't discriminate against job applicants with disabilities. Qualified people with disabilities are entitled by law to equal job opportunities. Make sure you know the requirements of your state's fair employment laws, especially those that offer more protection for employees than federal laws. The law that is most favorable to employees is the one that applies. Additional employment laws include Executive Order 11246, which requires companies that receive government contracts to have written equal employment opportunity plans and affirmative action plans for minorities, women, and or Vietnam era veterans. The Pregnancy Discrimination Act, which amends Title VII to prohibit discrimination based on pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical conditions. The fact that a female job applicant is pregnant, therefore, cannot enter into your hiring decision. The Immigration Reform and Control Act, which says you cannot hire undocumented workers. It also says, however, that you cannot discriminate against applicants on the basis of their national origin or the fact that they are not American citizens. Finally, the Uniform Services Employment and Reemployment Rights Act, which prohibits making past, present, or future active or reserve military service a factor in hiring decisions. These federal laws and similar state laws are enforced by government agencies and the courts. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, or EEOC, in Washington, D.C., enforces the federal fair employment laws. EEOC investigates employment discrimination complaints on behalf of job applicants and employees who claim that they have been the victims of employment bias. State Equal Employment Opportunity Agencies enforce state 
anti-discrimination laws. State agencies also assist bias claimants and investigate discrimination charges. State and federal courts play an important role in making sure that employers obey fair employment laws. The fair employment laws give the courts the power to levy substantial damages against companies that violate the laws. The Civil Rights Act of 1991, for example, allows courts and juries to assess compensatory and punitive damages in cases brought under Title VII or the ADA if intentional discrimination is charged. In addition to knowing and following the requirements of fair employment laws, we also recommend all our clients implement the following policies. We firmly support the fair employment laws and our hiring policy reflects a strong commitment to equal employment opportunity. And our goal is to hire the best candidate for each job opening solely on the basis of their qualifications to perform the job. Make sure you understand and follow the details of your organization's EEO policy as it applies to the hiring process. Also, follow the affirmative action plan if your organization has one. Job descriptions form the basis of objective job-related hiring practices. Here's what you need to know. In order to carry out the mandate of the fair employment laws and company policy and to ensure that your hiring practices are truly non-discriminatory, you need to start with a written job description for each position under your supervision. Focus on job qualifications such as necessary skills, level of experience. If there are educational requirements or certifications needed for the position, be sure to note these too. Specify essential job functions. These essential functions form the core of the job and a successful candidate must be able to perform these functions. This is particularly important for compliance with the ADA, which requires you to determine essential functions so that you don't exclude potential candidates because they can't perform some marginal job duty. In addition, be careful about setting educational and experience requirements as you write a job description for a position. If these are set at too high a level, your requirements may have the unintentional effect of excluding disproportionate numbers of minorities or applicants who are members of other groups protected by fair employment laws. Of course, where certain levels of education or experience are clearly job related, then the requirements are reasonable. Finally, be careful of physical requirements. Height and weight requirements, for example, are generally viewed as unacceptable because they tend to exclude women and some minorities. If a job requires heavy lifting, however, you can require applicants to be able to lift at least a certain minimum weight. If you are called upon to write a copy for job advertisement, here are several important points you need to consider. First, pay attention to your wording. Be careful of using words that refer to gender, age, or marital status. For example, instead of repair man, write repair person. Second, the key to writing non-discriminatory job ad copy is to focus on job responsibilities and the skills required to succeed in the position. Feature the objective, job-related criteria that are based on the job description for that position. And finally, be careful with educational requirements. Unless a particular degree is essential to performance of the job, don't mention it in a job advertisement. Because of unequal educational opportunities among different groups in our society, degree requirements tend to exclude a disproportionate number of applicants who are members of groups protected by fair employment laws. If you do need to raise the issue, it is best to say something like degree or equivalent experience required. In this part of the session, we'll learn how to conduct non-discriminatory job interviews. Conducting non-discriminatory job interviews is central to a fair hiring process. Follow these steps. One of the best forms of insurance against making potentially discriminatory errors during an interview is to write your questions down beforehand. In a moment, we'll look at questions you can and can't ask during an interview. But first, let's consider the basic elements of a non-discriminatory interview. Describe the job objectively concentrating on essential functions, skills, and experience. Ask similar questions of all applicants. Uniformity will help to ensure that you treat all applicants fairly. In addition, focus the discussion on job requirements and company policies. For example, if you're concerned that an applicant who might have young children may need to take too much time off, you can't ask if this person has children or about child care arrangements. 
You can, however, explain your attendance policy and ask if the applicant has any problem with it. Avoid stereotyping. Interview the individual and not a member of a group. And take notes of your conversation with each applicant. Your notes can be used later to defend against discrimination charges should an applicant challenge your hiring decision in court. Here are some suggestions for taking non-discriminatory interview notes. Your notes should be factual. In other words, you should document your questions and the key elements of the applicant's responses. Avoid any opinions or personal biases in your note taking. If your notes were ever subpoenaed in a lawsuit, this kind of information could be cast in a bad light and put forth as evidence of the discriminatory intentions on your part. Make sure you only note job-related information. For example, there is no need to note information about the way the applicant is dressed or groomed unless these matters are directly related to the job, such as in the case of a customer service employee or someone who is being hired to work in reception and will be dealing with the public. And finally, be sure to keep your interview notes for all applicants on file for at least one year. If discrimination charges are brought, your notes will help you defend your hiring decision. The requirements of fair employment laws prohibit you from asking the following questions during an interview. You can't ask any questions that might indicate a candidate's age. For example, questions about when an applicant graduated from high school or college, or other questions whose answers might suggest that a person was over age 40. You can't ask if an applicant is married. For example, whether the applicant's wife will mind him working long hours, or whether a candidate's husband is likely to be transferred. You can't ask if an applicant has children or dependents. Nor can you ask questions about childcare, pregnancy, or plans for having a family. Questions about dating, love life, sexual orientation, or living arrangements are strictly off limits. You can't ask candidates questions such as how many sick days did you take last year, are you generally healthy, or do you have any chronic ailments? Furthermore, you can't ask any questions about an applicant's nationality, ancestry, national or ethnic origin, or parentage. You can't ask if someone was born in the United States nor can you ask what language they speak at home or what kind of accent they have. You can't ask an applicant if he or she is a U.S. citizen or discuss the citizenship or birthplace of the applicant's parents, spouse, or other relatives. The exception to this is a narrow exception if you have a government contract that requires employment of U.S. citizens for security um, clearance purposes or anything like that, you can't ask that question. Otherwise, under no circumstances can you ask that question. And as we mentioned a few minutes ago, you cannot ask general questions about an applicant's state of health, nor can you ask whether an applicant has ever received workers' compensation. And you cannot ask if the applicant has any physical or mental disabilities. Under no circumstances can you ask questions concerning an applicant's religion. You can't even ask if an applicant's religion prevents him or her from working weekends or holidays or whether the person would need to take time off for observance of any religious days. And finally, you cannot ask applicants whether they have ever been arrested or about their arrest records. Now let's look at some of the questions that you can ask. You can tell applicants that if they are offered the job, they will be required to verify their legal right to work in the United States. It is acceptable to ask an applicant about their ability to speak, read, or write in another language other than English if the use of another language is relevant to the job for which the person is applying. You can inform applicants about company policies considering job assignments of employees who are related. You can ask applicants whether they can perform particular tasks if these tasks are essential job duties. If a physical exam is required for the job, you can inform candidates that if a job offer is made, they will have to pass a physical exam in order to be hired. Furthermore, you can inform job applicants about your attendance policy and discuss regular job hours, shift assignments, and so forth. You can ask the applicant if he or she has any problem with that. It is important to note here that reasonable accommodations must be made to account for a person's religious obligations. Problems in this regard would not necessarily exclude this applicant. 
You can ask an applicant who has indicated military service on a resume or application questions about skills and experience acquired during that service that apply to the job. And the EEOC has stated that the use of an individual's criminal history in making employment decisions may, in some cases, constitute illegal discrimination. Additionally, some states and municipalities have enacted ban-the-box laws, restricting employers from asking applicants about their criminal records. Therefore, employers must make sure that any such questions are job-related and permissible under federal, state, and local law. For some jobs, it may be necessary to give applicants a pre-employment test. Follow these guidelines. The EEOC allows employers to conduct pre-employment testing to aid in the selection and hiring process. However, any such test must be clearly job-related. It must be directly connected to required job skills and responsibilities of the job and be able to predict the ability of an applicant to actually succeed in the job. Other kinds of pre-employment tests, such as drug screening, may also be conducted if they are job-related. It is legal to require candidates to submit to a drug test if there is a legitimate safety or security concern at stake. Tests the company requires you to give applicants will most likely have been validated. This means that the test has been examined to make sure that it has no adverse impact on any group protected by fair employment laws. If you use a pre-employment test, be sure to give the test to all applicants for the position with no exceptions. And finally, make sure you give the same test to each applicant for the same position. And make sure you know which pre-employment test your organization uses. Now let's look at release forms and obtaining information about applicants. If you are going to check references and obtain other information about job applicants, you need to have them sign a release form at the time of the interview, giving you legal permission to access this information. Releases must be in writing and signed and dated by job applicants. It's a good idea to have the applicant's signature witnessed by someone in the organization who also signs and dates the release form. Include a release statement for each type of information you will be seeking. For example, references from former employers, personal references, educational records, driving records, and so on. Make sure you know which release forms your organization uses. Remember to only ask for information that is related to the job. And be specific about the details you choose to ask for. For example, in the release for employment information from former employers, be sure to include positions held, last pay rate, work performance information, disciplinary records, and information about any incidents involving unsafe, threatening, or violent behavior, dishonesty, or insubordination. You may not actually get a former employer to talk to you about these things, but you should include them in your release just in case the information is forthcoming. Many former employers are reluctant to provide much information when asked to give a reference other than verification of employment and dates of employment. They are worried about being sued by former employees who claim their former employer badmouthed them to prospective employers. So you may not always get much useful information from reference checks. However, it is always best to check anyway. Uh, on a side note, that is also a recommendation that Resourcing Edge makes for our clients that uh, if you have requests for references that you verify dates of employment and job title and nothing further, um, unless further release for pay information is provided by the former employee. When you are checking to, to calling to check references, um, please follow these guidelines. Tell applicants that no job offer will be made until references are checked. Check references for all final applicants. Call or write each reference supplied, even if you don't succeed in actually contacting someone or even if you don't get much useful information, you need to be able to show that you made the effort. And finally, be sure to fully document all information you receive. We'll speak more about exactly what that means in a moment. And furthermore, if you don't get sufficient information through your reference checks, you can ask the job applicant for more information, or you can ask the applicant to ask the references to be more forthcoming. And finally, misrepresentations or material omissions of information on employment applications uncovered during a reference check are legal grounds for denying an application or withdrawing a job offer. It is important to document your reference checks in case your hiring decisions are later challenged. 
takes these steps. Make a list of all references that you've checked. Include the name of the person who made contact with a reference. Note the means of contact, letter, email, or telephone, and list the name and title of everyone you contacted in pursuit of the reference. In addition, file all return letters and any records you receive, such as educational records or driving records. Take notes of your telephone conversation with references and follow your notes with the rest of the documentation. Document any unsuccessful efforts to contact references and any efforts that yielded insufficient information. And finally, retain your documentation for at least one year, whether or not you hire the applicant. EEOC considers reference check documents as legal records of hiring decisions and requires employers to retain them for one year. Usually, if a lawsuit is going to be filed over a hiring decision, you will know about it within the year. Here are the key points you should remember from this training session. Fair employment laws prohibit discrimination in hiring. Company policy should reflect a strong commitment to equal employment opportunity. Evaluate, ap evaluate applicants solely on job-related criteria. And focus on hiring the most qualified person. This concludes our session on interviewing and hiring. If you have any additional questions, uh, you may enter them into the question module at this time. You can also contact your HR consultant or you can contact our whole team at hr at resourcingedge.com if you have any questions that uh, came up during this session that we do not answer or if you would like some more in-depth training on hiring or interviewing best practices.